you too. In today's video, we're gonna take a quick little introductory dive into the brand new M3 Pro MacBook Pro in space black, yes. So I wanna talk about the M3 chip lineup, some of the misinformation, some of the reality, and also what Apple did this year to really separate the M3 Pro from the M3 Max and uh, put it in its place. All right, let's get into it. So this is the big 16 inch, 14 inches on the way and best believe a 14 inch versus 16 inch video is coming as well as my first things to do when you get a MacBook laptop. This is a big hefty 16 inch MacBook Pro. The moment I've been waiting for. Space black in the flesh. Man, the 16 inch always surprises me <laughs> at how hefty it is. For my people out there, woo, just know the 16 inch is no joke. It's a real, real, real hefty MacBook Pro. But it's worth it in terms of chassis size, cooling, and thermals. And here we have it, space black in the flesh. No, I'm taking a good look at this, just trying to see. I don't see any black. <laughs> I wore all black. So you put this up against the all black, and you dig. All right, let me set that there really quick. Let me grab the space gray for a second. I need confirmation for myself. As you guys can see, let me just say this. It really puts proper perspective as to the true color of the space gray, because before space black, we had silver and this, and this seemed like a nice darker gray, but it's really, really more of a medium gray in true retrospect. And then this is a dark gray slash matte black. Um, and we're gonna put our fingers all over this this whole time and see if we can get fingerprints and so forth as well. <laughs> and here we have it, fully unboxed the Space Black Colored M3 Pro MacBook Pro. And let's get into the truth behind Apple's chip lineup this year, where the true upgrades really happened and where the performance gap was made. It is finally a gap in between the M3 Max and the M3 Pro, allowing the M3 Max to be the Max in its own right and in its own space, and the M3 Pro to be the M3 Pro, the little homie, in comparison to the Max. And we gotta talk about the M3 chip, especially that base MacBook Pro and where it really lies and who is it truly for. But Let's get into like the early, you know, benchmark numbers for the M3 Pro, which show you the significant gap in between the M3 Max. Now, early scores for the M3 Pro are looking around 3,030 something ish for a single core and 15,170 some odd ish for the multi-core score. The multi-core score is a score that showed the least amount of jump over the previous gen. The single core scores across all of the M3s are all in that 3000 tier, which supersede or exceed the previous models, which max out around 2800, 2700 single core scores on benchmarks. So that basically shows the typical growth that we always see. Single core is always looking better than all of the previous chips, whether it's a max versus the regular or whatever. And the real reality is around the multi-core score, which is quite interesting how small of a gap of change in the M3 Pro versus like the M3 Max, which is doing numbers on par of that with the M2 Ultra of last year. So the M3 Max chip is really showing bang for buck and huge performance gains, but it's also a price point jump that's quite significant, which separates that market and that MacBook user by far. Now, another thing to consider, everyone's like, you know, having a fit around the base MacBook Pro 14 inch that comes with the M3 chip with eight gigabytes of unified memory and it's rocking the Pro moniker. And let's be real, any Pro machine should start at 16 gigabytes of RAM. But to be clear, that model is literally replacing a model before it that had the exact same eight gigs to start with and it wasn't really a true Pro MacBook Pro. The main price jump that you're paying for are the design changes, the new design, the better display that you're getting on there, the better design with the MagSafe charging and the SD card built in and things like that. These are where you're spending and you're getting your return on investment there. Again, the RAM discussion, I understand it's debatable in both ways. 
And I wish it was a base starting at 16 gigs, but that's just not what it's replacing. That's for the people who want the chassis of the new design with the SD card and the nicer build quality, but they don't want all of the true pro internals. Let's just keep it real. And the second you start to upgrade that machine to 16 gigabytes of RAM, I highly recommend at that point that you start looking at an M3 Pro base model, which is what I'm going to be covering and sharing with you guys. I got the 14 inch coming in. We're going to do the comparison. I'm going to help you guys make a decision between 14 inch versus 16 inch, as well as we're going to explore the M3 Pro chip in its base form. And I think that's the true pro machine. I think the base model M3 Pro is where people who are looking to do pro and have headroom should start. And this is how we're separating it. Someone who just wants a MacBook Pro to have a MacBook Pro, but aren't really doing pro stuff or trying to be pro, they're the target for that base M3. The people who are actually looking to start off with a true pro machine and build from there with 18 gigabytes, a unified memory to start off. You know what I mean? You can make your storage upgrades, it gets pricey, but that's the machine you start to build out for pro tasks, in my opinion. And the M3 Max, that's for the top dogs. That's for the people who have the budget for it. That's for the people who have the necessary need for that type of performance and pull because the M3 Max is the most impressive chip upgrade of this cycle, period. That's exactly why the M3 Max was seeded out to the top tier creators in abundance because the M3 Max is the true shining star of this refresh. Now, the M3 Pro is still the solid chip, the solid middle ground, the solid starting point, the solid price M3 chip. It's just a reality that it's been a performance gap and a separation in, in between the M3 Max and it's quite solidified this year because the multi-core scores were not that much of an improvement versus last year. And you can tell Apple was like, yo, let's just keep this one here and let's make a true separation. And that leads to that ladder that Apple has, which is, yo, it's pretty effective, but you can find yourself on the right step and the right height on that ladder if you are very intentional and very, you know, calm and selective as to what you need exactly and where you're trying to go with your machine. That's what I always try to make my buyer guides and my, you know, content around MacBooks for helping you make that clear decision. Now, I've been touching on this thing uh, quite a bit, rubbing on it and so forth. And I have to say, like realistically, you know what I mean? I got lotion on my hands. <laughs> and uh, this is actually doing really well. The claims of the coating for the reduction of fingerprints is actually true. Now, let's be real. If you sweaty and you go to touch this, I saw day 2 d put his oily nose, which is one of the oiliest areas. <laughs> Obviously, you're gonna get a mark, but the way that after he rubbed it or the way that they kind of like faded off afterwards was quite significant. And another thing, this is more of a darker gray. This is actually what I feel like should be called space gray because it really puts in perspective right now <laughs> where space gray actually lies. I thought it was a darker gray than what it was. And now that you see space gray against space black, black, <laughs> you really start to realize how much more of a medium gray this is versus a true like darker gray. You know, uh, that's something to consider. I do like the space black color in comparison to the space gray a lot more. This is what space gray should have been. And then we should have actually had an even darker color for space black, in my humble opinion. But I'm thankful and grateful for the space black that we have because this is a great color. And that leads me into this conversation. If you're looking at this color and you're just trying to upgrade because of this color, listen. If you got the budget for it and you can do it, do what you do, but let's be real. It's not the move, it's not the smart decision. I got an M1 Max Space Gray, you know what I mean? Decked out, big money spent on that thing. And for me to get out of that and into a Space Black, <laughs> I almost called it Space Gray because that's what it really is. It would be a, you know, a poor decision financially. But if budget is no <laughs> issue and you can do it like that, I'm not judging. Live on, baby, enjoy this color because it is truly a nice color for the MacBook Pro. So glad that Apple finally has given us a darker, more matte black-ish color. So the truth about the M3 MacBook Pro is that now there's true separators. The M3 MacBook Pro is not like the M3 Pro MacBook Pro. And the M3 Pro MacBook Pro is not like 
the M3 Max at all. These are like clear separators. Now, let's be real. These are the Apple Silicon, you know what I mean? This unified chip build, this has been yielding some of the highest performance gains to any <laughs> competition. So it's still that. You're still gonna get a great performance. You're still gonna be able to iron down and plow through a lot with even just the M3 Pro or even just the M3 chip, let's be real. But the M3 Pro chip is gonna be quite significant for the majority. And then the M3 Max is for that, you know, top tier 5% or whatever it is, the people who, you know, actually have a need for it. And then there's the reality that there are people who are gonna get the Max because they just want that headroom. And I don't see anything wrong with that if it's in your budget and you can afford it. And if you can actually push a machine to somewhat justify it. It has to be justified to a degree. Actually, it does not. You can just do what you want. If we want to be real, the judgment in the tech space around people's purchase decisions, I think it goes a little bit too far. Get what makes you happy, but don't be ridiculous with it. You get what I'm saying? Why waste money when you don't have to? Now, my next video is coming up with this here machine. It's literally about to be the first things you should do or you must do when you get a brand new MacBook Pro. And I got some new tips for that. I do this every year, you know what I mean? This is a tradition and we're gonna keep it going. And then the next video after that is gonna be the 14 inch versus the 16 inch. I'm gonna help you guys make better purchase decisions as far as sizing because there is a significant difference between the 16 inch and 14 inch. Even though it may not seem like it is, there truly is when it comes to real world use cases and everyday carry. My name is CJ, this is The Tech Corner, baby. Hit the subscribe button, turn on the bell so you don't miss any realistic <laughs> Apple coverage on these MacBook Pros. I got you. Ooh. You technology snobs, technology snobs. I didn't just about had it with all of y'all. Listen, <laughs> duck. <laughs> new watch, no diamonds, new watch, good timing, yeah. New watch, no diamonds, new watch, good timing, yeah. Need no middleman, I'm the man of man, send it in. I like what I like, me, I know my rights, it's sipping in. I like having fun, I do what I want, it's what it is. For my son and son, for my daughters, yeah, it's for my twin. I work through the night.